Hey everybody, Justin with the Millennial Mixtape, and today I'm so excited to tell you that I have an exclusive interview with Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein, the composers of the Stranger Things soundtrack. I'm Kyle Dixon. And I'm Michael Stein. We're gonna talk a little bit about what we do and how we do it. All right, Kyle, Michael, thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm, I'm thrilled that you uh, are here today. We do music. We've done a show called Stranger Things. All right, so uh, my first question and what my viewers would love to know is, how did you guys get involved with the Stranger Things soundtrack? It was a very exciting random email from the directors, just kind of telling us they liked the music of our band. They had been using it in a mock trailer for the show. They sent us the trailer that had one of our songs called Dirge. It's the last track on our first LP. And they decided, who was going to do the score to this TV show we're going to work on? Let's ask these guys who were using their music currently. Basically, they just want to know if we had any interest in being a part of a sci-fi drama with Winona Ryder on Netflix. Well, yeah, who wouldn't? That's totally exciting. Like, I would, I would love to work on a Netflix show with Winona Ryder. And I guess the next question that uh, me and my viewers would have is, what is your process like for coming up with your songs? It's like. Ooh, what is this thing and now and then it's like oh and then it's like cute and then it's like this <laughs> yeah. music's super weird i guess you guys wanted to know a bit about the theme song actually yeah that's the that's the whole premise of the show we would we would love to hear how you guys came up with the theme song for stranger things thanks misconception everyone thinks that the little arpeggio was written on a juno which i don't even own wow you don't even own it uh uh-huh and it wasn't an arpeggio, it was played by hand. And it was this guy. That's doing the main sequence. Mm -hmm. well, that was completely unhelpful, uh, but thank you. Uh, maybe you guys are a little more passionate about something else. Like, um, I, you know, I heard Taco Bell just recently changed their menu. Do you have any thoughts on that? You experiment, and that's where we come from. So it's always about finding new things, and that's what keeps me excited. So if you like something and it makes you happy, somebody else probably does too, they just need to find it. Wow, uh, so thanks Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein for your time. Thanks. Well, uh, we've had our interview. Let's go ahead and dive into the theme song for Stranger Things and see if it is the best theme song ever. Back after this. All right, so that interview did not go the way I thought I would. I still want to thank Kyle and Michael for their time, but let's see if we can get some more information as we go through the show. So uh, this is best theme song ever. Again, we're looking at Stranger Things this week. This is episode 11. Really quickly though, I do want to say I'm still running my giveaway. This is the last week for it. On August 1st, I will draw a winner. I'm trying to reach 100 subscribers. I am so very close. 10 away from 100 that would really help the visibility of the channel to get there. So to be entered in the giveaway, all you need to do is subscribe, like the video and comment. Uh, that will really help out uh, to get me to that point. What I'll be giving away is a $20 gift card to either Google Play or iTunes, or since my big show is best theme song ever, a season of your favorite show, provided it is digital on Amazon Video, iTunes, Google Play, or Vudu. I will gift that to you uh, as a thank you for subscribing. Just one of you, <laughs> and you say just one of you. All right, so if this is your first time tuning in to best theme song ever, let me tell you how it works. Every week I look at a different TV show theme song, I look at the premise or plot of the show as reported by Wikipedia, I then look at the history of the theme song. Now we got to experience a little of my interview with Kyle and Michael a, a little bit ago, but uh, I have some more information to share with you when we get to the history, so stay tuned for that. Then after I look at those two things, I have four criteria to rate and review the theme song. Those criteria are earworm ability, or the song's ability to be an earworm, intentionality of lyrics, which because this is a lyricless theme song, we'll be looking at the evocation of the song. How does the song make us feel when we're watching the intro or listening to it? Then we have title sequence, and finally, timeliness of the song, or how does this song fit into the soundscape of what was around it when the show premiered? So that is how we'll be reviewing it. Now we're going to look at the premise of the show. Here we go. So this is what Wikipedia says the premise of Stranger Things is. 
Stranger Things is set in the fictional rural town of Hawkins, Indiana during the early 1980s. The nearby Hawkins National Laboratory ostensibly performs scientific research for the United States Department of Energy, but secretly does experiments into the paranormal and supernatural, including those that involve human test subjects. Inadvertently, they have created a portal to an alternate dimension, the Upside Down. The influence of the Upside Down starts to affect the unknowing residents of Hawkins in calamitous ways. The first season begins in November 1983, when Will Byers is abducted by a creature from the Upside Down. His mother, Joyce, and the town's police chief, Jim Hopper, search for Will. At the same time, a young psychokinetic girl called Eleven escapes from the laboratory and assists Will's friends, Mike, Dustin, and Lucas, in their own efforts to find Will. That sounds like a show I would watch, and I do. Do you watch it? Let me know in the comments. So that was the premise of Stranger Things. Really heavily 80s influenced. Of course, every season they kind of throw it back to a different influence. Uh, season two was Ghostbusters. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Season one was, I think, The Goonies. So it's a, it's, it's a lot of fun if you kind of grew up loving that that cinema and, and aesthetic. All right, now let's look at the history of the song. All right, so you could probably tell that Kyle and Michael were not as forthcoming with information as I would have liked, but if you do want to hear them be interviewed by someone that they do give information up a little bit more freely, I'll have that linked in the description below. But something that I do want to also throw in there as far as the history of the theme song, they mentioned in the interview that the Duffer Brothers used a song called Dirge from Mike and Kyle's band Survive as kind of their like sizzle reel or promo for Stranger Things when they're getting things ready. And from that, they went ahead and got the guys involved and composed the score and do the music for the show. But if you would like to hear the song that was originally being used, here's something cool. It did end up on season three of Stranger Things and it is on the season three soundtrack. Also, of course, you can search for it and find it on YouTube. I mean, I would, I would play it for you here, but it's kind of hard to tell the difference between that and the song that's already used for Stranger Things. So yeah, you can go find it. It's, it's out there. All right, now we've reached our first criteria, earworm ability. I've got to be honest with you guys here. We've kind of kind of been on a, a pretty crappy streak as far as earworm ability with these songs here in the last few weeks. This one is no exception. It is not really an earworm to me. It is spooky. That's for evocation. But as a listener, it's just kind of a grungy, atonal sound. It kind of runs through. And then it's got the do 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 It's got that arpeggiated. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Arpeggiated. You don't want to cop up to it but it's arpeggiated. It's got that arpeggiated piano line that goes through. And so, you know, it's it's not really anything that like I can't get rid of, right? So like I hear it once, I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna watch Stranger Things, blah. But like that's about as far as it goes. So for me, this song is not really an earworm. Um, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone who thinks it is. So because of that, I'm gonna have to give Stranger Things a one on the earworm ability scale. All right, up next, let's talk intentionality of lyrics. All right, so as I mentioned, this is a lyricless theme song. There are no lyrics. It is evocative of something that's kind of creepy and there's tension there because I believe that arpeggio that they play, that line they play, doesn't really leave the octave. So there's like that tension of like wanting to like break out of it, but you can't. Uh, I mean, I'm not really into like musicology, but I'm just gonna pretend I am for the sake of this video. It does kind of create that like, like that terror inside of you and it's, it's tight and it's tense and it's spooky. So I feel it does a good job of, of giving you that sense, but you would be doing the show a disservice by saying it's only a, a creepy show or a scary show or a spooky show. It has those elements of it. It's not just a spooky show. You've got the jump scares, but I mean, I don't know. So I feel like to say that you get everything you need as far as the evocation of the song from that would be doing the show and the song a disservice. So for, for you know, intentionality of lyrics slash evocation of the song, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a 2.5 out of 4. There's room to grow there, but it, it it does an okay job. All right, next up, title sequence. Am I your pet? What? No. And why do you treat me like garbage? What? You said Nana was sick. She is. She is. 
She is sick. Yes, she's sick. sick. She's sick. This does not do it for me. Let me know what you think. The Stranger Things title sequence is trash. It is trash. Like, it's just a black background with red. It's just, it's, it does nothing for me. It doesn't clue me into what the show's about. It doesn't let me know really anything is going on. You get a sense of like the 80s with it, but like really that's about it. Like it's trash. They were trying to do that whole minimal thing that we've seen, you know, like the kind of the Game of Thrones thing or the Westworld thing. They're trying to do that and they did not succeed. Like this is not a good title sequence at all. You know, if I had any knowledge about the industry and we're teaching a course on how to craft a title sequence, this would be exhibit A of don't do this. It is not good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, a one out of four. It is not good. If I could rate it lower, and this is my own show, but if I could rate it lower, I would. One out of four, not good. All right, and our last criteria is timeliness of the song. So Stranger Things premiered on July 15th, 2016, which feels like a long time ago, but was just a few years ago. I don't know, time is a mess right now. So the number one song at that time, which was nearing the end of its streak on the Billboard Hot 100 is One Dance by Drake featuring Wizkid and Kyla. That's a catchy song. Like, I mean, it's Drake, right? If you're gonna dance to it. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna move. Stranger Things ain't that. It is not going to get you out of your chair moving. It might make you be like, I think I should take a bathroom break before the show starts because I don't know what I'm in for. I'm really ragging on the show. Man, I think I need to check myself. I need to do a heart check. I'm not I'm not giving it its fair due. But yeah, I just, the Stranger Things, I don't know, maybe it's because Kyle and Michael rubbed me the wrong way. We'll say that's what it is. You, you know, we'll, we'll pretend that I take some days and reflect and come back to this, but right now I'm going to say no. So Stranger Things, it is timeless in the sense that like lyricless things tend to kind of go wherever they can and need to and want to but because it does have that heavy synth laden like it's just you know i'm, just, I'm not i don't i don't feel it and here's another thing something i wanted to mention so this song is a complete ripoff i kind of buried the lead didn't i i waited till right now to say that but the theme song for stranger things is a total ripoff it is almost a carbon copy of a van morrison song from 1974 called you don't pull no punches but you don't push the river it is almost exactly the same in fact here you go here's a little bit of a van morrison song and here's a little bit of the stranger things song I think I should be evaluating Van Morrison, right? I think we should talk about that, which Van Morrison is timeless. Van Morrison is eternal. I have to say that because my wife would kill me if I didn't. So for Stranger Things, which is just a mess of a song, I'm sorry, I have friends that like it. And I mean, I like the show too, but the song is trash. It's garbage, I'm sorry. For Stranger Things, I'm gonna have to give it a 1.5 out of four for timeliness. All right, so with all of that, let's see how Stranger Things lands on our final score. So we have a two, a 2.5, a one, and a 1.5. When we add all that up together, we get a 43.7. Of course, I'll be generous and round up to a 44. So 44 out of 100, that is a low F. Man, I'm really feeling it today. I don't know what's going on. All right. <laughs> Hopefully next week I'll feel better and, and, and the show will, will do better. But yeah, Stranger Things, I think that's our lowest rated song thus far. Not, not great. Still a good show, but not good. So with that, I'm going to have to uh, take off and go do a heart check, reevaluate, see what's important in my life. <laughs> I'll leave you. That is it for me. Again, I'm Justin. This is the Millennium Mixtape. This was best theme song ever with Stranger Things. Can your show do better? Let me know. Hit me in the comments. Say what show you want me to do next. Again, these drop every Monday at 8 a.m. Uh, so be on the lookout. Subscribe and I'll be on the lookout for the next one. And over here is a video that you might be interested in. Go ahead and give it a click when you're ready. Until I see you next time, stay safe, stay well, stay out of the upside down and justice for Barb.